Hey, what's up, everybody? We're trying this again. Uh, we're hanging out here with the rhino iguanas. This is Petro, my buddy. Uh, it's real hot afternoon. There we go. And uh, I think we're, we should be good here uh, as far as Wi-Fi is concerned. So hopefully you guys will jump back on and hang out with me. I had a pretty amazing day. A lot of fun things went down. Uh, what's up, Will Jonas, Magical Blanket? What's up, Coiler Samson? What's going on? I shouted you out, buddy. Uh, anyhow, really fun day with Jay from Prehistoric Pets. If you want to see a little bit about what we were doing today, I want you guys to go on over to Jay at Prehistoric Pets Instagram, and you can also go to my Instagram, Camp Kennan. Follow along there because that's where you'll get to see what's going on as it happens. So we had shot some fun videos, and I think you guys will dig them. They'll be coming out real soon. In the meantime, I don't know, just hanging out right now. Uh, so earlier, uh, you know, we kind of lost the feed because I was uploading uh, some footage that I shot today, giving it to Tom, making sure Tom has the current stuff to throw up on Sunday for a bonus. And uh, there you go. But in the meantime, I'm hanging out with Petro. Uh, Petra must be inside her box, but let's just go ahead and give him some cactus. These guys love a little bit of cactus. Uh, I actually got some eggs out of Petra this year, so I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, they should be hatching on the next few weeks, which will be pretty cool. Come on, bud. Uh, so you can see he has no problem getting that cactus. Look at that, guys. They can really bite. I don't know if you guys can see the serrated uh, edges there, but they got quite a good bite. They're pretty tough animals, and these are truly dinosaur-like uh, lizards, don't you think? I love the fact that they have those really cool horns, uh, and you just got to be careful because these guys are tame, but you want to be careful because they can give you a pretty darn good bite. Uh, so Petro, here is Petro, and he's looking good. I got these guys a few years back from my friends over at Starborn Reptiles. Uh, they do a great job uh, breeding some Cyclora, uh, as does my good buddy, Thai Park. You know, these are definitely two of the people that I respect when it comes to cyclora breeding. Also, Sam Piscucci, another good buddy of mine. So those are some really good places to get cyclora. Uh, and of course, I'll be selling some of the babies. So be on the lookout uh, for some of them as those guys hatch. What's up, Matthew Owens? Uh, I'm doing good, man. So we're having fun. I thought this would be a little bit relaxing. I'm almost losing my voice a little bit. And uh, it's just been such an adventurous day with lots of driving and things going on. So I thought I'd just keep it simple here for this live and kind of hang out and talk to you guys. Maybe answer some questions about the rhinoceros iguana. Uh, that's pretty much what I'm going to be talking about a little bit. Uh, where is Slinky? It looks like Slinky is either in the water or in his house. So if he shows up, I'll go ahead and kind of bring you guys over there as well. Uh, so anyway, like I said, good day. We visited with my buddy Fred Grunwald today. And I love the fact, look how regal he looks. He's so cool. Uh, very, very cool. These guys here are about six years old. So let me put him back so you can kind of see him. Uh, he is six years old. Uh, and he is a really, really uh, beautiful animal. He's going to get much bigger than this too. Um, definitely been putting on size. Uh, I just love the way he is right now. Look at this. Look at that lizard. I mean, is that cool, guys? Uh, so these guys need really warm temperatures. You know, you're going to really have to have a basking area that's somewhere around 110 to 115 degrees. Um, they love that. They bake. They just love to bake. So it's very important that you have that kind of uh, ability if you're living up north to give them space and proper basking and temperatures, okay? Uh, so, you know, that's important. Um, sometimes you'll see these guys open their mouths uh, if they're heat stressed, if they're a little too warm. Uh, so you're going to have to also have a cooling area as well. So they really need the thermal gradients, and I love just looking at his face. And the cool thing about Cyclora, like the Cuban iguanas, Jamaican iguanas, Bahama iguanas, and of course the rhinoceros iguanas, are when they look at you with their eyes, uh, they're really trying to figure things out, which is neat. So uh, there you go. Now someone asked how many eggs did they produce? Uh, this year I only got six good eggs, but she laid, she actually laid about um, 12 eggs. So half of them uh, did not uh, take, they were not fertile. Um, and that'll happen from time to time with younger females like mine. Uh, she's inside right now, and hopefully she'll come out and make an appearance for this video. But um, right now, Petro is just amazing. So I like to come in here and I like to spend time with the lizards. Uh, that's the best way to really tame them up. You know what I mean? You just kind of hang out, uh, be in their environment, become part of that environment, if, if you know what I mean. 
and uh, they'll go ahead. Oh, look at this. This is the when they raise up, they're very happy. How cool is that? So they're just, oh, I don't know. It's just so amazing. I love spending time with these guys. Uh, the babies should be hatching Benjamin Exotics in another two and a half to three weeks. Uh, sometime, I would say sometime uh, in October. Uh, but yes, Magical Blanket, he is handsome. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, Roger McGregor, the big monitor, is calming down at Kyle's. He was a little antsy, uh, but Kyle's been spending time with him. So that animal's also doing well, which is pretty cool. Uh, we'll definitely go over there and do an update on him as well. Uh, I don't know if we got a name for him yet, but he will be a member of the sanctuary, and I think you guys will really appreciate that when you guys uh, come to visit. I hope to see some of you guys. Hopefully, you'll stop by and book a tour when the sanctuary is open, man. That would be really cool. Um, I am, I've had crocodilians here before, um, but I am not planning on getting any more right now because we're going to have the sanctuary, and I'm going to be up to my ears in uh, gators, crocodiles, caiman. Uh, and hopefully one day Gariel. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? Uh, so I'm going to have a lot of crocs over there. So there you have it. What's up, Wicked Wildlife? Good day, mate. Let's see what's going on, buddy. Uh, what's the status of these guys in the wild? Yeah, good question there, Wicked Wildlife. Uh, these guys are, you know, the way it goes basically with the Cycloras, they're the most endangered lizards uh, as a group of lizards. Uh, so in the Caribbean islands, as you can imagine, there are a lot of hotels and there are a lot of um, tourist industry and that's displaced uh, the valuable real estate that these guys have there. Uh, as you know, European man, just like they did in uh, Australia when they showed up, they brought their dogs and cats uh, and other animals that became kind of pests like goats in the Caribbean. Now the dogs and cats are going to eat their babies and sometimes attack the adults. Oh, here's here's Petra, by the way. Sometimes uh, attack their, uh, she's found the cactus pad as has this tortoise. Um, but to get back to answering your question there, Wicked Wildlife, um, basically their status is uh, vulnerable. Uh, they're definitely threatened. There are some, she won't let me take that cactus pad back. There are some, uh, like the Jamaican iguana, um, you know, um, the Luisai iguana, the, the Grand Cayman blue iguana, uh, that are definitely, come on up here, come on up here, come here, that are definitely more, um, let's just bring her up. There you go. That are definitely more threatened than any. Oh, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? Be nice to each other. Oh, you know why? This is his basking area, so they can be territorial. Be, don't be a jerk. I'm trying to explain things to Wicked Wildlife, dude. And you're being a jerk. Come here. There. Anyway. Uh, you can see that when it's not breeding season, they like to kind of keep their distance and they stay in certain areas. Um, but anyhow, the Cuban uh, iguana is least concerned and followed by the rhino iguana. Um, you know, uh, in Haiti, they've almost been wiped out. But on the Dominican Republic side of the island of Hispaniola, they're still hanging in there. Um, but, you know, we got to be uh, we gotta, gotta be concerned about them because any animal uh, that lives on an island, uh, is going to be under more stress or pressure to lose habitat because of the fact that it's on an island. So I hope that answers your question, mate. Um, and we're still hoping to get down to Australia at some point this year or early next year. So I'm excited. Let's see. I wish you guys, I'm going to pick up this camera so we can spend a little time with Petra. So here she is. She smelled the, she must have smelled all the good stuff. I'll try not to get you guys a crotch shot, but there she is. Oh, go ahead, sweetheart. You just go ahead and eat right off my lap. I wonder if I can do this. I just want to show you guys how she's looking. She's looking pretty good, I think. Don't you guys think she's looking good? Maybe I'll just get a little dirty here and kind of get down and hang out with this beautiful woman here. Uh, where are you going? I'm, try I'm trying to be nimble here. Oh, my. So there she is. They've got the cactus pad. These tortoises are going to be nibbling it up also. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions out there. Maybe I can do that. Yeah, there you go. I'll hang here for a little bit and talk with you all folks. Uh, yeah, they're always hungry, Magical Blanket. Uh, they are beautiful. Uh, best iguana for a starter? Gosh, that's a good question. You know, um, iguanas, in my opinion, uh, if you don't have the space for them, there really aren't many iguanas that are a good starter. And... It's funny, even green iguanas. Green iguanas get big, and if you don't have the space, and if you're not careful, you know, they can give you a pretty good bite. Um, I would say this. If you can do well with a bearded dragon and provide that animal, I would consider that to be a better starter lizard because 
they kind of grow to a decent size, but not unmanageable. And uh, of course, look, there's Petro. Um, you know, then you can kind of feed them um, <clears throat> similar greens that an iguana will eat. Uh, but of course, you know, uh, I love rock iguanas. Uh, they are terrestrial. Um, they tame up nicely. Uh, so it would be really cool if you guys did that. Well, Diego Montes, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you watching the channel and uh, sticking around while we do these lives. Uh, they're basically for you guys. I know the quality isn't always the best and a lot of people gripe about them, but um, it's really mostly about, um, you know, it's mostly about being able to interact with you guys. You know, it's about answering questions and becoming friendly and getting to know some of you that really uh, are um, very consistent with showing up on these lives. And I just want to read a question, Wicked Walla. Thanks for that, Kenan. Totally agree with the island theory. Australia is a perfect example of animals that have evolved in isolation. Our local health monitor is listed as endangered. Our local, I don't know, Heath monitor? Wait, what monitor are you talking about, mate? I don't know. Um, but you guys got a lot of cool reptiles, that's for sure. Uh, anyhow, um, moving right along, let's see what else we got here. Catch up with some of these videos. Just found your video, uh, loving it. Oh, very good, Nathan Brown. Bowen, Nathan Bowen, thank you so much. Well, we, you know, we're always going to be improving. I'm starting to shoot with a different camera now. Uh, basically, uh, I was shooting with an iPhone for a while. It works okay, but, you know, that's only in the last ditch effort. Uh, but I'm shooting back with my Canon uh, Tom, of course, has a camera, so we're trying to, you know, fix up some of these sound issues that you guys have been uh, dealing with. Now, I'm going to stick to questions about these animals here uh, today. I want to really try and stay focused on answering questions about the cyclora because that's what we're talking about right now. Um, so rhino iguanas and Cuban iguanas would be what I'm answering questions about, okay? Uh, exotic exhibits, do the rhinos ever interact with Cubans? Uh, not much, and if they did, it would be disastrous. Um, you know, uh, they are very territorial, and they would never even really come to see each other um, in captivity because they're found on totally different islands separated by large swaths of the Caribbean Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, rather. Um, so uh, here at my house, uh, what happens is they can sometimes get on up. If you look right back there, right in this area, that's actually the um, Cuban iguana area. But if they were to actually come face to face, um, it would be male on male fighting, females fighting males, males fighting females. It would be nuts. Um, these animals, someone asked how long they can they live? They're really long lived animals. They can live close to uh, 60 years and sometimes they can go above that. Um, there was a lizard from, I believe it was Dallas Fort Worth Zoo, uh, Godzilla. I think he was somewhere around 80 years old. He was a uh, blue iguana. Um, so there you go. Um, but they're, they're really cool, man. Uh, so I, uh, I like it. Uh, someone also asked, is a green iguana a good lizard? Yeah, it's a great lizard if you have the space for a large arboreal tropical species, okay? Um, so I'll be giving you guys updates because when those babies hatch, I'll be certainly... Um, letting you all know. So that's why I ask you to follow along on Instagram as well. The Instagram channel is Camp Kennan as well. And uh, I post a lot of videos. There's a funny video uh, I did today in slow motion. You guys remember um, last week, the guy who tried to kiss the um, snapping turtle? You guys remember that knucklehead? So there was a dude who tried to, to kiss a snapping turtle and in slow motion it went, Like that? You remember that? All right. So um, I kind of did a goof on that. We, I went in the pond. I grabbed up one of the fly river turtles, and they always flap like this. So we did a slow motion where it slapped my face. But it's funny because I was like, you could just see my lip. It was pretty good. So um, there you go. Uh, Diego, I think you said you subbed and liked. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, very cool. Um, here we go. We got some more. We got some slimy slimy cactus because Petra's down here eating and she's just tearing it all up. I don't know, you in the mood? You done? I think he's done. We'll just leave that right here. Let's bring this sexy girl right here. Here she is, look at her just doing her thing. So she's just hanging out. You could see there, you know, even though I don't handle these guys every day, she's still pretty happy as long as she's got some food. I'm gonna hold this so she can rip it. Okay, because in the wild, they'd be ripping this right off the tree and uh, you know, it would be attached so therefore they'd have better leverage. Uh, awesome, huh? So they're both beautiful, male and female of this species. They're both really nice looking. Um, I had a female named Azul, 
and uh, she was a very long, she was almost five foot long. She was a massive female. And unfortunately, she got egg bound. And when she finally did lay their eggs, lay her eggs, um, she tore fat bodies from inside of her abdomen and she had a prolapse, which means that they came out of her cloaca. So it was terrible. And I had to euthanize her because there was just nothing I can do. So that was kind of a bummer, man. And I don't know where Petro's gonna go. He might touch the phone. Oh God, don't touch, he's gonna lick the phone. What's he gonna do? Yeah, don't lick the phone. Oh no, he screwed up all my comments. He just licked the phone and let's say he just scrolled. What we got here? He just scrolled all the way back up. Okay, excuse me, that was gross. Um, let's put it right here now. Uh, let's see, any other questions? Any other questions about the rhinos before we go? Um, yeah, let's see, the gaming. Bro, how do I feel about the red tide issue in Florida? Yes, that's on the Gulf Coast. I'm on the Atlantic side of the state, and fortunately, we're not dealing with that, um, but it's horrible. Uh, it is something that sadly uh, is, of course, caused by agriculture, uh, factory farming. A lot of the sugar cane and fertilizers that they use um, are now being, instead of being filtered out, from the Everglades, which is what the Everglades were. Basically, all the water in Florida moved from North Florida in that large underwater aquifer, all right, would go into Lake Okeechobee, and then from Lake Okeechobee, it would just meander its way through the entire southern part of the peninsula from West Palm Beach. It's basically, uh, the Everglades is a slow river that was basically from West Palm Beach all the way to Fort Myers and then straight down the entire peninsula. And basically guys, what it is, it's a giant filtration system. So we started to divert that water, dig canals so that many people could build homes and condos and you know, dry land is valuable here in Florida as you know, it's pretty much a wetland. Uh, but by doing that, we've, we've pretty much stopped the ability for uh, the, the planet or for the Everglades to filter out any kind of nitrogenous, uh, nitrogenous wastes and stuff. Um, you know, and then of course, without that, what's happening is it's dumping directly into the uh, Gulf and it's causing an algae bloom and it is lethal. So it's a bummer. Um, it's not something that's gonna be fixed anytime soon without some serious um, work. And sometimes I worry, sometimes I think, hey man, we might, be, uh, we might be doomed as a species. But that's okay, because if we go away, planet will heal itself, and uh, animals will rule again. So don't worry about it. It only stinks for us, okay? We won't survive, but there'll be other animals that, that evolve and grow and take our place, that's for sure. Now, someone asked me a question, and I wanna get back to it. Uh, Tyler Lazerti, how long can a sulcata live in an eight foot by two foot, 2.5 foot table? I, I don't know, it depends on how long you're, um, you've been, uh, or how much you're feeding them, how fast it's growing. I'd say maybe two to three years. Uh, that would be my, that would be my, um, look at him, he's having a hard time picking it up. That would be my guess, okay? Uh, so, you know, you just wanna make sure that as he gets bigger, you wanna make sure the space is uh, good for him. Come on, bud. I like to help him, yeah, see? Well, I got the small part of that. And you gotta be careful when they're eating. I don't wanna get bit. There you go. I'll just chop it up into these little pieces. He really works it back and forth though. Look at that, right down. They swallow in chunks, no issues. Get down there off me, sweetie. Let me get back over here so I can read. Uh, there you go. All right, Petro, you having fun? Pretty good stuff, right? Are you gonna lick the camera again? Will you stop licking my camera? Look, he sees himself, guys. He's looking at himself and I think he wants to kind of see if he needs to wreck shop. I don't think they're self-aware. Okay, I don't think they realize when they look in a reflection that it is them, similar to a bird. That's why you give birds a reflection and they kind of can do, uh, well, they don't feel quite as alone because they don't realize, realize it's them. But uh, yeah, all right, good deal. Well, guys, we've wound up with a uh, fairly long, uh, interesting, I thought anyway, um, good old live. And I just want to say thank you to all the people who have come out and support the channel. Uh, by following along with these lives and asking questions and your donations are always, uh, you know, appreciated. So um, they weigh about 20, 25 pounds on average when they're full grown. Uh, Connor, there you go. Uh, you're looking about four and a half to five foot uh, on the extreme end. Uh, babies are about $600 and uh, they are just magnificent animals. 
pretty intelligent lizards and a lot of fun as you can see they're personable as long as you do the work like i do you get in here and hang out with them you can see that they really don't mind um so there you have it all right everybody i am now going to sign off i'm going to walk around the camp make sure everyone's happy nobody's flipped over and uh i don't know i guess that's it thanks guys thanks so much don't forget to like and subscribe go on over to camp cannon on instagram and follow along there for more content as well and if you like the videos you want to help us out please go to my patreon page at patreon.com slash camp cannon and you'll uh, get species profiles you'll get all sorts of fun stuff on all the animals here at the camp all right everybody have a fantastic weekend and uh, as always there'll be more videos saturday sunday and next tuesday so long.